first thing I, I would like you to I'd like to ask you is about why you accepted our invitation if you can tell people about it a little bit well it seemed exciting to go to Brazil I always been interested in going to Brazil I, you know in America we, we uh, are always uh, exposed to a lot of Brazilian music and dance and uh, you know Brazilian culture is very strong so it sounds like an exciting place to go oh. <laughs> great and did you ever hear about something about uh, tarot community in Brazil? Uh, well, I've heard about it for years, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of Brazilian friends on Facebook. Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about your talking uh, on Sunday, uh, sorry, on Saturday, about uh, tarot history and symbolism? So if you can tell us what people will we, we'll uh, we'll learn about. Well, the thing there's a lot of misinformation about the tarot where it comes from, and I one of the things I do in my book is I try to have real factual history about the tarot, so that uh, we can uh, develop ideas about the tarot based on what actually happened. And what happened is that the tarot was created by artists. You know, there's there's all the speculation that I mean, first of all, most people have probably heard the idea that it came from ancient Egypt, which doesn't make any sense because they didn't have any cards in ancient Egypt. I mean, papyrus doesn't lend itself to making cards, and uh, the, so the cards weren't. If you if you follow the history of cards, which is the history of paper, you'll see that paper didn't even exist in Europe until uh, the 1200s, and and it wasn't really until the 1300s when they re really became popular. And that's when cards were introduced into Europe, and then you'll see by the early 1400s they developed this particular card game where it had this extra fifth suit, and that's the tarot. And that was developed in northern Italy. So when we look at the time and place, we can see the, these cities in northern Italy where it was developed. And we can see uh, that it was developed by artists at the time. And the artwork in these early decks that we can find is very similar to other artwork from that same time and place. And by looking at that artwork and in other contexts, I can see what it means. And you, can, and you have an idea what the artists are expressing because you know from the context, from the historic context of it, and then we can actually understand the message the way it was originally made by the artists who created it. Perfect. Um, and can you talk about, uh, talking about uh, your decks, can you tell us what will happen in the master class about uh, geochemical tarot on Sunday? Okay, well, after, well, the idea isn't just to, to uh, understand the history. I mean, it's important to understand factual, accurate history, because that's actually what happened. Sure. But, um, but but the my main point in doing that is to like understand the Torah and understand the symbolism. So what we're really after is understanding the mystical message and understanding that this that there's a what we call a Neoplatonic philosophy to the Torah, which is basically mystical Platonism. And so the, so the the tarot cards have this message about be, becoming enlightened for real. That's what they were from the beginning. Sure. And when we understand that, then it it, it speaks to us uh, more clearly. It's it's like as if you had this message. This conversation has been going on through the centuries. You know, it's like a five hundred year conversation, and uh, and and we want to be part of that conversation. Yet it's like playing you know that game where you you whisper in somebody's ear and they whisper in somebody's ear and it gets distorted over time. So you want to find out what the original message was, you know. And then when you get back to the original message, you go, "Wow, that's really a great message." You know, like this is really important to my life. <laughs> and then you understand the cards and you, you identify with it. You know. <laughs> Uh, and the master, uh, master class will have also uh, some time to read tarot. It's not something just theory, like on Sunday, or like on Saturday, yeah. but we will use the deck, right? Right, yeah. And I see the thing is, once, I, once you understand the deck and understand the cards and understand that you're, you're, what you're trying to do is communicate with your higher self, like your inner wisdom. And so I developed techniques to, to allow you, basically get your ego out of the way and let the, that inner wisdom talk to you. Because the biggest problem people have is in reading cards is they they try to force it to say what they want, <laughs> and you have to be able to, you have to let the cards tell you things you don't want to hear sometimes, you know. Yeah, difficult but true. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the last peop uh, last thing I want to ask you is a lot of people are asking us if you're bringing your decks to sell. Uh, oh yes. 
Okay, well, I'm going to primarily bring the Alchemical Tarot and the Tarot of the Sevenfold Mystery, which are my most popular decks. And I can only bring what I can fit in my suitcase, two cases, because there's a weight limit on the plane. But So I'll just fill them up. And I'm not going to bring any books unless people specifically request my books. So that's it, Hubbard. Uh, this is a... And just to show people that really, you're really coming and... Uh, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and we're really excited to have you here and Rosa as well. So thank you, Robert, and we'll see you soon. Okay, thank you.